everybody and welcome back to Devon Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name is Nicole Reed, and today is a little bit of a different video. It's a little bit of an informational video that we've got happening today because we have some challenges that are happening over in our Facebook group. So if you're not part of the group but would like to be part of the group and join in some of the challenges, by all means, the link is down underneath this video and you can come over and join in the fun. Now, I've had lots of questions over the last couple of weeks, uh, well, probably the last two weeks since I started putting the challenges up. I've had questions like, where do we post? How do we join? Have I missed it? Or anything like that. So let me just say, first of, all, first of all, you have not missed any of the challenges. They don't start until the 1st of January. I've just got a little bit ahead of the game with my um, posting and everything like that by putting them up. Now, in the group, in the file section, you will find lots of information there. And then on the events, you will also find in information about the individual events. So let me just grab my notes I had here somewhere that I seem to have moved. All right. So just to give you an idea of some of the um, challenges that we have now, we are a multi-craft group. So I've tried to cover stuff for everybody, really. Um, my book closed. All right. So we have a couple of bingo challenges happening next year. So the bingo challenges run for three months. They are a 12-week prompt Okay, so there's 12 different prompts and each week I roll a dice and basically that goes up on a Friday evening around six o'clock. Um, I will post that into the event. So to get that roll, you need to be um, in that event. So you need to have clicked going. If you click going, any post that I will put down in there, you should receive. Now, when you click going, you, there is a little spot there somewhere that you can click so you get notifications. Now, that is a setting on your um, phone or on like I, I'm only on an Android and I'm on my laptop at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one of the groups and I'm going to uh, one of the events and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So as I said, we have reading um, bingo. We have sewing bingo as well or stitching. So that covers all genres of stitching because not every Everybody cross stitches. Some people do embroidery. Some people do Brazilian embroidery. Other people do other types of stitching like tapestry and stuff like that. So we've got some prompts and we've got hours and we have um, stitch counters. So for those that like to count their stitches, such as cross stitches, there's a lot of us, including myself, I count my stitches. But then there's people that do embroidery that just will time themselves. So the prompts are pretty easy. Um, if you've been in the group, you already know what the prompts are. They're up in the file area and you can um, click those and then you can organize your um projects that you're going to work on because there's different um like maybe stitching in black or stitching in red or something like that they are different prompts there you can get all your projects organized for the next three months and then when I roll the dice on Friday you've got a week to to stitch that or read that okay so that's the bingo ones then we've got a uh, reading and a quilt block challenge um, which is the a to z so the reading one is read the abcs and the quilt block one is called a to z quilt block challenge so as the name suggests you need to find blocks and or books that start with the letter of the alphabet so for instance if for a reading challenge you um and you don't have to do them in order. You can just do them as you read them. So you can just mark them off throughout the year because that is a yearly challenge. Okay. So the bingo challenges go for three months and every three months I will put up a new three months of prompts. Okay. The reading A to Z and the ABC, the reading ABCs and the quilt one A to Z, that is a year long event. So it starts on the 1st of January and it goes to the 31st of December, 2022. So basically what you do there is for the reading challenge, for um, example, you might read a book that the title is the book that I read at school, actually, and I did a lot of work on this at school with Zed for Zachariah. And basically, if you read that book, then you can mark that down. There are many books out there to uh, that start with all the different letters of the alphabet, okay? And you can cross them off your bingo as well if it meet, if you read it in that prompt. So if the prompt on your bingo was read a, a book with the letter Z and you read um, 
Z for Zachariah, then you can cross it off your bingo and also cross it off your yearly one. You can actually do that. Okay. The object of the game is to make it as simple as possible, not super hard, not stressful or anything like that. So that is the reading one. Now the quilt block one, you can do that in order if you like, or you can do it at random, but you basically have 26 blocks from A to Z. Okay, and you need to find blocks that start with that. Now, you can get into Google. There's lots of resources there. I've got a lot of blocks on my um, YouTube channel and there's other places that you can go, such as Missouri Star Quilt Company, the Fat Quarter Shop, uh, Shabby Fabrics, just to name a few. There are many people out there that do um, quilt blocks and whatnot. So the idea of the game on this one is to find all the blocks and you only have to make one one every two weeks so it's not super stressful okay and once you've marked it once you've done one you can mark that off but you don't have to just do quilt blocks I for me personally I have gone already started hunting for the different blocks that I'm going to do and I'm just going to do one a fortnight so one every two weeks and basically some I've got are 12 inch blocks some are 18 inch blocks some are even 30 inches so those are mini quilts so you can make all 12 inch blocks you can make all different sizes you can mix and match it and have it as a quilt as a, a um, mini quilt or a table topper you can at the end of the challenge you're going to have 26 blocks regardless okay so then you're you can turn them into a table runner you could have them as mini quilts in your room um, as most of you know that have been following me for a while that I am renovating at the moment and I haven't got all my mini quilts up and I've just noticed a terrible spider web just there. I need to get onto that today um um, yeah, so basically, I used to have them all over. So any orphan blocks or anything like that, I could turn them into a little mini quilt. So basically, you can do the same thing and decorate your sewing room. But the idea of the game is to have a lot of fun, okay, and step outside the box, maybe make a mini quilt if you've never made a mini quilt before. So you can do things like that. Um, for me, as I said, I actually have a variety so, um, going from, I think the lowest one I've got is 10 inch right up to 30 inch. And I'm going to make a quilt and table runners. I've got some mini quilts to, to put up on the wall in the house and all that sort of stuff. So just get your imagination going, go on the hunt. Okay. There are, as I said, lots of resources out there and it's not real hard to find them. Um, I think there's a quilting block library is one of them. There's, as I said, there's a heap of blocks that I've got over on, on the channel as well. Um, Missouri Star Quilt Company is another one as well. You will find all the blocks you need to, to find. Um, and basically, uh, if, if once you've made it, just post it in the group so we can see it. Again, I will put up um, any announcements or anything like that in the event itself. So you'll get a message for it. Now, if um, you haven't clicked going on any of the events that you're interested in, you really need to click going, okay? Because that way you will get notified. All right. The next thing is that we've had a lot of people um, asking how to post. Um, now, I'm in two minds about this, especially with the um, with the reading challenges. Like if you've been in the group in the last um, three months, I've done a bingo. I did a trial bingo one. And a lot of people were excited about it. They were interested in it. And I've been doing the book reviews from um, those books on a Monday with my Stitch With Me. Um, I just basically talk about the books that I've worked on and uh, that I've read during the week um, from one stitch to me with the other. And a lot of that included the bingo challenges. So if you've been in the group, you would have noticed that the bingo challenges have been going into the main group. The roles for um, these bingos are actually going to go into the event. So again, to get that prompt, you're going to have to go into that um, event and click going. If you're still sitting on the fence, click maybe, because then you'll still will be able to see the, um, what's being posted in that event and everything like that. And if you notice that you've got friends in the group and they haven't seen it yet, tag them in the event so they know what's going on or maybe send it to them in Messenger. They'll see it because they're part of the group and it's it's just for the group. Um, I've had another question about can I do it on Instagram? Um, I'm not posting it to Instagram. This is purely for my Facebook group. Um, I... 
I will have to look into that a little bit div- uh, a little bit more because I'm not a hundred percent sure how I would go about that. I think I might have to make a group chat um, so you can get the notifications because I don't want to flood my wall or my story with these prompts that people don't know what they are. Um, but I will do a little bit of advertising over there, like for the group challenges and stuff like that and see how we go. If I need to do, if, if there's a lot of interest over there, um, they'll get the same prompts as what's in the Facebook group, but um, I might have to just do it up as as a, a group chat or something like that. And I'll post the, the prompts in there each week. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to do, I, I guess, like just a little bit, you know, a couple of extra clicks and then it's done. So um, I'm looking into that. I, I, I really don't know how to do that at this point because I have been just focusing on the Facebook group. Um, so if you've got any suggestions, I'm open to suggestions. You can leave them down below or you can contact me directly at askme.dds at gmail.com and um, we can have a discussion and maybe you can help me out in that aspect. But at this point in time, it is just on Facebook. So if you haven't, if you're seeing this video on YouTube and it's the first time that you've come across my channel and you think there'd be something that you're interested in, uh, basically the link for the uh, DD's Quilting and Crafting group is down below. Now it is a multi-craft group and I'm trying to encourage people to post more things. So we've got um, some journal um, events happening. So that is uh, a weekly prompt we give you. So you've got a week to work on it and you can share your journal. So that can be anything from a life journal, maybe a travel journal. If you're traveling, you're lucky enough to be traveling at the moment. Um, all that sort of stuff, or just a personal journal. Now, I'm not asking for you to um, share your heartfelt um innermost thoughts or anything like that I'm just you know simple prompts such as like I'll just flick over to them um where is it here we go so your fa- maybe one of the prompts might be your favorite song lyric and so you journal about that so you'll you know maybe get pictures of the band that sing it and and do some cutting and pasting and just relaxing a bit of coloring maybe write the song lyrics out and the reasons why it's your favorite and stuff like that very simple just simple prompts to do so I'm doing uh, one prompt a week for that so by the end of the year you might have a nice journal that you can reflect back on we've also got um, a sewing one happening and we've got different prompts for that so the the first prompt is already up for that and the first one that we're going to do is sew a pin cushion so we will have a varying amount of different things that will go up during the year and this one is a weekly one as well so at the end of the year if you don't have time to sew and you want to sew every day but you just don't have time we're giving you one item to make and you make that and at the end of the year you've got 52 items and a lot of these will be lending themselves to gifts so you'll be able to be ahead of the game for next year's Christmas all right so as I said the sewing one our first prompt is make a pin cushion from the 1st of January to the um, 7th of January so you've got a week to make a pin cushion. What we're asking everybody to do is share that pin cushion, no matter where you got the pattern from, share that pin cushion that you made in the group so everybody can ooh and ah over your creations. And we can see, and we might get some ideas for ourselves as well. Um, we, I will be asking you just to um, post and maybe tag me because we've got prizes as well happening um, with the group. So that all those that participate in our challenges, whether they participate in one for the month or they participate in all of them for the month they go into the um, monthly draw and basically you get to win a prize and that might be a book Um, I've got some wonderful craft books that I've just got in that I'll be able to to ship out if you're overseas and it's a bulky item I will ship it directly to you from Amazon Um, I may end up having gift certificates for different places around the world um, and all that sort of stuff so I will whoever the winner is is um, for the month uh, we will talk and we'll discuss and basically we will work out how to get it to you um, save me some money on postage and also get it to you so I'm an Amazon Prime member so I get a lot of free postage and all the rest of it the wonderful Liz has been part of the the channel she has just been a winner of um, a book that was my favorite book for the year which was the lost dictionary um 
the lost dictionary sorry the dictionary of lost words I don't even know the title oh my goodness but yeah she won that book and basically we made it super simple she we announced the winner on Tuesday and I think she had the book on Thursday and she's in the UK so basically I got on um, Amazon and I sent it to her and they gift wrapped it for me as well so it was nice and easy so there are prizes to be won throughout the year and we're doing them as a monthly draw so Make sure that you post, make sure that you let me know um, that you've posted something so I can go looking for it because sometimes Facebook isn't so nice to me with notifications. So you can always send me a message as well. Um, but I generally get on in the morning and the evening and I check out everything, but sometimes I miss a post. So just if you've got a question for me or anything like that, make sure you tag me and then that way I will get it because I seem to get tags all the time. It's just when people post into the group, I don't always see it. So as I say, you have to be in it to win it. Um, you don't you don't necessarily have to do every prompt either. Like, you know, you might not have any time one week or maybe for a month you can't participate in any of them. That's fine. Just as long as you, when you do start participating again, tag me so I know that you're back in the, in the um, game. The other one that we have is um, a photography challenge. So um, that is going to be super easy. It's just basically one a week. Uh, sorry, yeah, one a week. So you, at the end of the um, year, you'll have 52 photos that you've taken throughout the year of what you've done and all the rest of it. So the first prompt is a self-portrait, okay? And I can tell you what the last prompt is going to be. At the end of the year, I'm going to take get you to take another picture of yourself so you can see where you were at the beginning and where you were at the end and everything in between. So we'll have lots of things like if you're out and about and things like that. So there'll be 52 prompts throughout the year. They will go up weekly on a Friday. Um, same as the sewing one, they will go up weekly on the Friday. If I am going to be super busy for that month, you may see four prompts go up for the entire month. So let's say I got to March, I've got a lot on, I've got kids stuff at school and all that sort of stuff. I already know sort of pre-plan my um, months in advance for, for work and all that sort of stuff because I work for myself and I can do that. But life sometimes gets in the way. So if life's going to get in the way, what I will actually do is I will just put up the entire month's prompt. Um, so you will see four. And basically there will be dates on them and you just work on that prompt for that date. So it doesn't mean that you have to do all four in the first week. You do them over the month to spread it out, okay? The bingo rolling ones, um, they will also go up weekly on a Friday. Um, now, as I said, we have a stitching one. We have, um, and we have a reading one at this point. Um, and then... As I said, they will just go up on a Friday. You will see a dice with a picture. And I, you know, when you're at Bingo and you've got the blotters where you blot out the number, I just blot out the number in pink or purple or whatever color um, that I'm takes my fancy um, for that challenge. And basically they run from January to March uh, for 12 weeks. Okay. Then we have, a, I think we have a, 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 through the year, there's a week break between and then the next set of 12 go up. Okay. So, um, yeah, so keep an eye out for those. They're all going to be done as events. You need to click going so you can get um, the information because something might change or a new prompt will go up. So you just need to keep an eye out on the events. Now, let's share the screen, shall we? Um, I've just got to do a couple of little things before I can do that. Uh, let me just get onto Google. And let me get into Facebook. So bear with me for just a moment. Okay, where are we? All right, DD's Quilting and Crafting Group is where I want to be. All right, so let me just bring up my screen again and let's share the screen so you can see what I am looking at. And there we go. All right, so you should be able to see what's happening. Okay, so you can see here, this, this is the quilting and crafting group. Okay, this is the cover. You can see all our members. We've got 1,200 members. So thank you for joining all those that have joined in the last couple of weeks. We've had quite a few join. And you can see at the top here, we've got our featured section. We have seven events that are coming up. And so if you want to see all of them, you just click on all. 
Now, you should be able to see what's happening there and you'll see the first three events there. And then you've got see more down here. If you click on that, that will bring up all of DD's events. So what you want to do, you can, um, you can invite some of your friends. Uh, you can actually share it to your page. I don't know if they're not in the group, whether they can see it or not. Um, this is my view, so I can edit and stuff from here. So you won't see that. But if you click on, we'll click on the, um, the sewing one. Okay, you click on that. And hopefully you can see all this. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> it's working. So you can see here we've got the cover shot, um, DD's 12 week stitching bingo challenge. And I'll put how long it goes for in brackets there. So you can see there I've got it January to March. Then down here we've got the, you can see the um, people that are going. We've got 31 people that are joining this, this one. So that's very exciting. Um, and then you've got, down here, you can see uh, the guest list. We've got a lot of group members have been invited. So if you are going and um, your, some of your friends haven't been invited yet, make sure that you send them an invite, especially if they're in the group so they know what's going on. Um, and you can see here where we can see the 31 people are going. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see all that. Um, I'm looking at it from an admin's point of view. And if you click on see more, you can see here that I have put in all the information. So the, the challenge runs from the 1st of January to the 31st of March. It's open to all form, formats of needlework. So if you do ribbon embroidery, just back stitching, running stitching, anything like that, any sort of stitching needlework we're talking about here. Um, I have... I can even include in that um, English paper piecing because essentially that's all done with a needle and thread. So it is needlework. Even though it's sort of quilting, it's still needlework in my, in my eyes. <laughs> okay, so basically, but when you look at the prompts, which we'll get to in a moment, you'll see that they're more suited towards um, needlework as such as tapestries, um, embroideries, cross stitch and all that sort of stuff. So um, it, it goes, um, as I said, for three months. And then I've got here 6 p.m. on a Friday evening, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Now I am in Queensland. So for those in Australia at the moment that have daylight saving and all that sort of stuff, I'm an hour behind you. So, um, or an hour and a half behind you. And WA, I think I'm two hours in front of you. <laughs> so um, basically just It'll go up at 6 p.m. So if you 6 p.m. at your time, just go and have a look. It'll be there for, for everybody else. Okay. Um, if you are if I'm behind you, it won't be there until um seven. All right. So we've got here um we've got a prompt, okay, for whatever that is in the um, I think I've got it written down here. Where's my sewing one? Okay, so one of them, one of the prompts is stitch for four hours or 400, um, 400 stitches on a piece with ha which has black in it. Now, for that one, you don't actually have to stitch on black, just a piece that has black in it. If you have to stitch on something that has on black itself, I will actually say stitch on something um, red. So stitch red, basically, um, or something along those lines. That's the quickest and easiest way I can explain it um, so I've got an example there for example we roll eight then you would work on a whip with animals in the chart and you would work on that for 30 minutes a day okay so 30 minutes a day might get you 50 stitches a day by the end of the week you've got 300 and whatever stitches in there okay so the object of the game is to um, work on your chosen whip so your work in progress um, for that week and get the prompt finished by the next Friday. So you've got Friday to Friday to get it finished. Once you've got it finished, you can put the prompt, you can put your um, beginning and then your end, okay, um, picture. And you can put that either here in the event or you can put it into the main group. If you put it into the event, I'm definitely going to see it. If you put it into the main group, you are going to have to um, tag me in it. All right, and we're going to get, I'm going to show you how to post over in the main group and also here in the event in just a moment. Okay, so as I said, the object of the game is to get 30 minutes a day for, we've just rolled eight, we've got to work on a project that's got animals in it and we have to work on it for 30 minutes a day. So 
about 50 stitches a day that that works out to be some people a little bit quicker than others but you know that's about average okay you need to get it done by the next friday if you don't get it done it doesn't matter okay post up your your progress um you can for a 30 minute a day one you can actually post your progress every day um so you would put up the your original post and um yeah and then i'll show you how to do that in just a moment okay so it also says there that you can find the bingo challenge printout in the groups file section and we're going to go there in just a moment um and I'll show you where that is and how to download that, okay? So it's going to make it easier for you to get organized. You can get yourself a little tote bag and you can get all your projects that you're going to work on in the next 12, uh, 12 weeks, which is only going to be one a week, and you can pop it in there and then you're good to go. All right, so what you need to remember is to take a before picture, so before you start of your whip, post it to the group or to the event, and then... Um, all the, participants, all the participants go into the draw. And then when you're finished, your prompt, you post it up. And you can put in there how many days you stitched on it or how many stitches you put in. That's entirely up to you. Um, but you need to get, you know, some of them you need to get specific amounts of hours or um, stitches in. So just be aware of that. Now, if you're a member of other challenge groups, some people use... Um, code words and all that sort of stuff i'm not doing that with this one um basically i'm trusting that you're doing it but i will ask for a before photo and i will ask for an end photo um and i ask for you to do it in that week not to jump ahead and all that sort of stuff because that's just that's not fair on the people that are actually doing it and considering we are going into a prize draw if i need to i will change it to um, put code words on your beginning picture so we know that you're actually and handwritten so we actually know that you're doing the right thing okay so um i as you can see here um people have already started posting um, thank you for the invite, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've only ever done one challenger. I found it too challenging, but I like the, this one better. Um, you know, it looks interesting, exciting, you know, and you can post in there. You can get to know the other people that are actually doing this challenge. So you can go over there, say, hi, I'm excited, whatever you want to put in there. All right. So that's what our challenges look like. And pretty much every challenge will look like that. Now to click going, you just have to, where is that? It'll be up here somewhere. You'll have a respond button. For me, it's invite and edit because I'm admin. Um, and just click that going. If you're not sure and you're sitting on the fence, you can see here we've got people that are invited, maybe and going. All right. So that is how that works. Now let me go back to the um, group. Hopefully it'll take me back and you with me. <laughs> All right, so we're back at the main page of the group. So this is where everybody is um, posting what they're working on, chit-chatting, asking questions and all the rest of it. So we're going to look at um, a reading challenge now that we've been having going this year. Now, as I said, for the bingo challenges, I'm actually, and um, the prompts, I'm actually going to post them in the group, uh, in the events. So everybody that's doing the event will get their prompts and all the rest of it and their numbers. So you can see here, let me just scroll down a little bit. So this is our bingo challenge at the moment. So this is what you will see in the event. We This is our last one for 2021. Okay. And we're finishing the year off with a classic. So you can see here, I'll click on this photo. This is what the prompt looks like without the dots. So we, we have now completed our bingo challenge because all our areas are blotted out. So you can see here that we've got numbers 1 through to 12 in the corner inside the box. So that's the prompt number. Then above it each week, I post a picture of what it is. So you can see here week 1 happened to be number 1. Week 2, uh, week 4 was prompt two week two was prompt eight week three was prompt six so you can see we're jumping around the board okay it's not a point of getting this and then just reading from one to twelve because that's boring <laughs> that's too predictable so we want to make it a little bit unpredictable and this is how the challenge for the sewing one work uh, the, the stitching one works as well we have all the prompts written in there and then each week um, we put up like this will go up and I blot out which one. So let me go back to um, the 
page and you can see here I've got a picture of the dice so basically what happens is I roll the dice I've got a 12-sided dice and it's just an app I roll the dice and that was the number which was number three week 12 and that was reader classic so if I go to the media here I should be able to find I might have to scroll down a bit just bear with me for a moment so you can see we've put all sorts of stuff into the group oh where are we there's been lots going on all the challenges are starting to go up I encourage you to post funny pictures and all the rest of it so you can see here this is um week 11 so I blotted out uh, week 11, so that was seven, um, which were uh, prompt seven. So read an author that shares your initials and you can see that number three, week 12, isn't blocked out. So as we go, more and more dots will get on there. And I'm pretty sure that that's pretty understandable there. You can see I've rolled the dice. Now these have gone into the main group because I didn't create an event for this, okay? This next year coming, they these prompts will go into the event. So click going. I can't stress that enough because you'll miss the prompt otherwise. All right. So now let's find our files. Let's go up to the top. All right, so now posting, I should say with posting. So you can see under this week's prompt, a lot of people just post underneath okay of the book that they're reading that's that's fine because i'll get that notification because i've put the post up some people put the picture of the book that they're reading um someone will put the picture of the the project they're going to sew and all the rest of it for me this is um what i post and you are welcome to post this way as well in the the main page there's some people that may not be doing the reading challenge that may want to come and join the next bingo prompts which is um starts in March and basically they'll they'll watch what's going on and all the rest of it and they might get some ideas for some books and all the rest of it so you can put um your picture up and um you if you look last week where's mine from last week that was not excuse me I read Nora Roberts because she shares my initials um where is it where is it so you can see here I've posted up the book that I'm going to read and then a book description on it um, you can find all that stuff over on Goodreads. It makes it super easy. I just take screenshots. This week I'm reading a classic. And so I have put up the one that I'm listening to, which is being read by Hugh Grant. And I must say, he's doing a very good job. I'm halfway through the book already. So um, I have a lot of the um, children's classics and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, and I just put up what I'm reading. And um, I mean, everybody knows what the Christmas Carol is about. I didn't need to put a description for that. But I listen to these on audio and um, then I've, I, I meet the prompt and I can just get on with it. All right. So you might be wondering where to find the prompts. Now, I, I have already put these up in the group so you can get organized. So if you come up to the top of the group, you can see all these little things up here. Click on more. It'll drop down and you can see we've got files. Click on that. And that's going to take you to all the files that we have going on. So we have, uh, these all went up on December. Um, that's the one that we're just finishing now. So that was the file I put in there. But we have the DD's ABC um, year long reading challenge. Um, and these basically are just, uh, which I'm going to open up for you. They should just open up straight away. If you click on it, are you going to play? No. Yep, there we go. It'll just open up and it's just a spreadsheet. So you can print that off and write them down. Um, it'll open up in Adobe. And um, yeah, and then you can just write the books. You can organize your books that you're going to um, read in the coming year. Um, you can find the books that you want, um, you know, like you can go searching for the books and all the rest of it. Um, for the sewing, we'll just go back. Um, we've got our reading bingo. So this is what it looks like. Oh, we'll go the stitching one. Okay, it'll click you to where I've posted it. And then you just click on it and wait for it to open. So you'll have this to print off. Okay, you can put that in your um, in your diary. And you can see here that we've got all our prompts. So they're not too hard. Um, you know, like for instance, 
Number 12 is stitch a whip with a house on it. I mean, most embroideries have a house on it. It can be a birdhouse. It can be a house. It could be a dollhouse. It can be any sort of house, whether it's real or imaginary. <laughs> okay. It could be, you get creative. So it could be, for instance, it could be a woodland creature's house. So that might be a mushroom. Okay. With a little door on it. That's still technically a house. Okay. So you've just got to get a little bit creative um, and work out what you're going to um, stitch on. So that is easy enough to print off and then you can just mark it off as you go. Um, now let's talk about how to post. All right, let's just go back to the home page. All right, so as I said, you can post up your pictures any way that you like. You can put them into the, um, come on, what are you doing, Facebook? It's been difficult. So you can post it up like this, that this is what you're going to read for that prompt or this is what you're sewing on this week. So if you're um, sewing the pin cushion, I'm sewing this pin cushion. Um, this is where you can find it. Um, any, informa any relevant information or anything like that. Um, you can put in there uh, the finished picture you you don't have to put the start picture for the sewing prompts but for your or your, your stitching ones and your reading one your reading one is just a picture your stitching one you need to put a before and after so I'm going to show you how to do that all right hopefully I have some pictures <laughs> somewhere um, let me just have a look what I've got going on all right I will just um, I'll just stop that share for a moment and grab some other stuff that I need to grab. So bear with me for just a second. Um, let me just have a look what I've got going on because I've posted pictures into groups and stuff like that. So what, and I can't take you into those groups. So I'm just going to go into those groups and get what I need. And then I'll be back in just a second with a shared page. Um, let me just have a look. Where am I? I want to go to my saved is what I want to go to. Unfortunately, I can't take you into someone else's group. So um, at the moment, I'm doing a challenge, okay, a stitching challenge called uh, Stitch My Ride. Okay, so um, I'm just going in to save the pictures to my computer because I did it from my phone and they're not in my computer. So bear with me for one moment. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing a um, Stitch My Ride in another group and so I'm getting those pictures from that group right now to show you how to post okay all right so I can just uh let's go back this is all right we're back in dds again all right so let me just share that screen again all right uh, back in dds and we share all right, so hopefully you can all see that now. All right, now let's go over to our events. Now, if you want to, as I said, to find your events, they're all here. You can also come up to more and click on them there as well, okay, and go to events, see, and it brings you straight there. All right, so let's go to our stitching challenge. Okay, I'm going to post in the group, uh, in the event for this. All right, so I'm going to go add a post and I'm just going to put sample of how to post. Okay. All right, so I am going to put up my cover picture on what I'm going to um, stitch on. So I'm going to do, let me see, uh, the prompt is two hours. Yep, two hours, oh, hours or 200 stitches on a whip, not a sort of whip, <laughs> whip with, with green in it. Okay, so that's the prompt. And then I'm going to add the cover picture of what I'm going to stitch on. There we go. 
Okay. Oh, actually, that's not how I do it. Sorry. Okay, so this is a sample post, and I'm just going to post that. All right, and that'll post up in just a second. All right, so there you can see that there. Okay. So I've got the prompt is two hours or 200 stitches with, a, with green in it. So I'm going to go to the comments and I'm going to click on the little photo icon. And then I'm going to put my starting picture, which just jumped. There it is. Okay. And I'm just going to put cover. Pick. And enter. All right, so that is, that'll come up in a second. So that's what I'm going to be stitching on. Then in the reply section, I'm just going to put reply, add another photo. It seems like a lot, but it's not really because you take these photos as you're going. So this was a new start for me. So I'm just going to put um, new start, although I'm not doing any new starts next year. That was just one that I've done recently. And I just press enter. And you can do this all at once. You don't have to keep coming in. So you can have a cover shot picture, then take a picture of your start. And then when you finish, take your thing and then you've, then you've done it. So now I've put my start picture up. I didn't stitch on it this particular day. I'll come back the next day because I've done my 200 stitches. And then I just hit reply to that picture. Okay. And then click on it. And then put my finished picture. Where did that just go? There it is. Open. And I just put finished prompt. 252 stitches went in. Okay. So that took me about two. I was chit-chatting and, and all the rest of it. So I wasn't totally focusing. But that took me about three hours to get that in. But if I was just focusing, that would only be two hours of stitching. Um, so, yeah. So, or, or you may have done hours, you can put um, finished prompt, two hours of stitching, okay? Now, if you've got a project that you have got a lot of stitches in, maybe just circle it, like edit the photo and circle where you have, have stitched because sometimes it's hard to see, okay? But if you've got a start and a finish, you know, like because 200 stitches isn't a lot when you look at it like that is not a lot of um, stitching overall okay then you just press enter and it's done okay and for some reason I've got two <laughs> but anyway um, two, it doesn't matter if two has gone up but you can see there I've done 252 stitches from a new start to that and that that's it I'm done so I will get a notification that you've posted in there I will come along and I will like your post um, some th sometimes in some other challenge groups, they might put a tick here. So I know that it's done. I'll co like come in and check at the end of the week. And basically then your name goes into the draw for the monthly prize. Okay. So that is as simple as it is to post. So that's all you need to do um, when you're doing it. And that's the same for the reading challenge. You can do it that way. You don't obviously have to put a start and finish, but you can just post the book that you're reading. Um, and why you're reading it, like what the prompt is, um, which we'll all know if you're posting in the event, but over in the main group, people might not know because they've not seen the event or anything like that. But that is as simple as it is to um, post where to find all the things, what you need to do to go. Um, yeah, so just make sure that the things that you need to check off your list today is if you're interested in any of these things is if you're not in the group, you need to come over and join us at DD's Quilting and Crafting. Link is down below. If you are already in the group and you're seeing this video and you've seen the events but didn't know how to do it, go and click going and then you will get all the information you need. I'm also going to be having a live stream um, I haven't, I, I'm not sure what day yet. I've just got to check with the girls when they're finishing work. So I'm not going to get interrupted. Um, and once I know what their movements are in the next coming week, I will be doing a live stream in the Facebook group and I will have um, answering questions and all that sort of stuff for you. So 
make sure that you head over to the group today, join the group, and then that way you won't miss out on any of the events that we've got going on. I'm in the midst of also doing a crochet and knitting one as well. That is going to be a monthly challenge because that's a little bit of a slower um, challenge as well. So um, yeah, so that, and that will be a combined one. And I'm thinking that I might do it as I'm thinking monthly is probably the best way to go. Um, if it's a big project that I picked for, picked for it, um, yeah, I don't know. I might set it up as a bingo challenge actually, because we've got 12 months. So I might set it up as a bingo challenge and then roll the dice. So, um, and put the prompts up there. That sounds like a good idea. What do you reckon? All right. So that is all that I've got for you today. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming for you or too, um, too, like you can understand how it all works and everything and it, and it all makes sense a little bit more sense now especially for those that haven't um, done challenges before hopefully this will give you a little bit of an insight of how some of the other challenges work around the um, Facebook world and all the rest of it and I'm sure if you've been following me for a while you know that I've been into into challenge groups they help me stitch a lot of stuff um, I'm not in any sewing challenge groups or anything like that I don't actually think I've seen any so um, but then again, I haven't really looked either. So make sure that you go over and you check out all our events up there. Keep an eye out for the knitting and crafting uh, crochet ones. They are almost done. Um, I'm just trying to make it, you know, like I could get very complicated with those ones, but I'm trying to keep it really easy for everybody as well. So some maybe some of the beginners can join in as well. Now, the other thing I will say, you don't have to do every prompt, okay? There is no pressure here. This is all at your own pace. Um, yes, we do have timelines of when things are getting rolled and all the rest of it, but if you need a little extra time to finish off something, that is okay. The only um, thing is that you need to finish it in that month if you're going to go into the monthly draw. So I know that some people are a, a little bit time poor and all the rest of it, but you don't have to do all the things. You don't have to do all the challenges. You can just pick and choose your ones for your your um, time frame and all the rest of it. Okay, so obviously the weekly ones, we'd like you to have them finished before the next prompt so you don't get overwhelmed. And that's why they're so simple as well. All right. That's it from me today. Have a great day, everybody. I look forward to seeing all your lovely creations, your journal, your photography, your knitting, your crocheting, your stitching and everything throughout 2022. It's going to be an amazing creativity year. And I'm hoping that I am going to be surging you along to think outside the box and get some stuff done. We're also going to have an amazing reading year as well. So if you haven't been following my vlogmas, head over and check out what books I've been getting for the last um, what are we up to? Day eight, uh, no, day 19. Today, the Christmas tree goes up. So uh, yeah, day 19 in my Vlogmas for 2021. So um, yeah, head over and you can see some of the um, some of the books that I've been getting. And I've also had a couple of unboxings for book haul as well on Saturday in the studio with Nicole. So um, you will be able to see some of the other books that I've got as well through the um, book grocer. They have big boxes of books for hundred dollars and you get anywhere from 17 to 20 books in there. Some are hardcover, some are paperback, some are short stories, uh, some is poetry um, and stuff like that. Just depends on what box you pick. So I've got a lot of crime fiction ones and I think I've got a romance one um, and a fiction one as well. So I got a lot of books there and um, my new challenge for next year is to actually read. I've actually upped the ante um, with the, I'm doing a challenge over in um, Magical Stitches again and they've got uh, 26 prompts and, uh, sorry, 27 prompts and each prompt has four books in it. So I am going to be over the hundred mark again. I have just done my hundredth book. I'm actually on my hundred and second book um, for this year. So, and that's all sorts of books that I read through audio and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to join those reading ones, I've got some smaller ones, not so big as the magical um, stitches one. Uh, yeah, Magical Stitches one. They're amazing challenges that um, Vicky and Sammy put together over there. So if that's something you're interested in, you could always go head over to their group as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll come along and join in the fun of DD's challenges this year. And I look forward to seeing everything that you are going to create, pictures that you're going to take in your journal entries and all the rest of it. Have a great day, everybody. Don't forget to like this video. 
comment down below tell me if you're going to be joining and uh, if you have yet to subscribe sub subscribe to the channels then that way you won't miss out on any of the information or crafty videos that i put up have a great day everybody and i'll see you all again next time bye for now